Right, so author ID as well. Um, I can get into doing field length and field size stuff, but that's kind of for another day. Uh, what have we got last? We've got the customers. I'd call that custom open for me. Uh, customer ID. Right. Um, so now what we need to do is we're going to have to connect these up and actually get these linked somehow. So how do we do it? So we've got the database tools, relationships, because we're going to get these related. Um, and I'm going to put these all in. It's actually pretty straightforward when you lay it out nicely. So let's get the customers out of the way. Um, right, and then this is our uh, supplies table with the main books table. When you guys step up to something more complicated, particularly the year 13 level, we'd have product, customers, then sales, and how that all crosses over, which is not as straightforward as you would initially think. Supplier ID is the one I didn't change. I need to change that. Um, just go open that quickly. Ah, uh, yes, and see how it's got all these blanks? It's because I removed all the duplicates, so it's done that. So I just highlight down the list. Right, and then just hit delete. That's how we get rid of all of them without having to do it painfully slow. Supplier ID. Okay, let's close that. Right, okay, now back to it. So we want to take author ID, because you can see it's got the key. That's the main ID field for it. That's why it's the important one. And we can see author IDs written here. So this is why we use those naming conventions. Enforce reference integrity is really important. So basically what it says is, um, in here, if I had an author ID of 200, it wouldn't allow it because author ID 200, like there's not a, an ID in this table with an ID is 200. So I ha it has to exist in this table before it's allowed to be put in here. So that's all you have to do, create, oh, I can't force reference integrity, why, let's go have a look at the books table, okay, yes, stop watching, right, the books table, uh, author ID, fields, number, I had made that number, I had made that, so it might have been that ID count issue that I was just talking about, so I've got 130 here, Let's go to author. So that's our issue. 100. So if I go to um, the books table, and just say the last one's doubled, 129, even though we know it's not because I missed something somewhere. Um, close. You probably watched the video and watched me do it and be like, ah, oh, you missed it. How could you miss it? Right, but now that's done. Let's see if I'm correct. Enforce, create. See, no worries. So that's that's what I mean. That's was a good example, I, as, as intentional as that was. Um, and then this one as well. Connect, enforce, create. So now, effectively, if I want to see these relationships uh, in action, I can go through to, say, the suppliers one. And I say, oh, what books have you supplied? Poof, I open it up. And that's all the books that's been supplied under there. I guess it does come with sound effects. Um, but if we're doing a query and we want to query and have more than one, like have the information there, so I want to query uh, all the books from 2007 plus the supplier name attached, how would I do that? Because it sounds like they're in two separate tables, how does it work? So I'm going to create, query design, I can then go books, well I want the author in there and I also want the supplier. So whenever I'm doing a query, the one way to really break a query is to put more, two ID numbers in that other primary key because it doesn't because essentially the one that's a, that has the this one would be deemed as the the most the kind of the main table. So I can say uh, category book year published publisher. I won't go ID. I'll now go first name, last name, cost of store. Won't go ID. Go supplier name. Um, and then I could say published uh, greater than 2010 so that should filter out some of the books um, run okay so I've only got 111 
options out of out of my actual book one, which I've got 149. So I did filter out a couple books, not a lot, but a couple. Um, it's an annoyingly large field. Uh, right, but you can see in here that it actually has the author first and last name. That's all showing up. The publisher showing up. Um, the supply names all showing up. So that's all. That's all in there. Um, so you can yeah you can see those queries kind of in action using we go back to design tool multiple tables and how to do it so that's how we do it so basically I just go down the main table adding my stuff and then when I'm on this table go across and grab that there because it knows it's connected because of that relationship here so this one to many type thing says one author can publish uh, can author many books one supplier can supply many books not one book can have many suppliers and one book can have many authors. So that's, yeah, you can see that has, that's why the relationship's that way around and it's why it's done that. Okay, so um, unfortunately it was only a really short needed second part to kind of explain that process, but that's um, that's the kind of the, the gist of getting it going and getting to do kind of introductory relationships anyway.